Welcome everybody. We're going to be looking today at a different way of looking at the normal distribution. We've been so far finding the probability of a random variable having a specific value or a range of values within a normal distribution. Now we're going to do this. We're going to use the inverse normal distribution, which you'll learn about momentarily, to find the value of a random variable that corresponds with a given probability in a normal distribution. So in other words, if I say that 25% of the values are less than a number in a normal distribution, and I give you the mean and the standard deviation, you ought to be able to tell me what number is it for which 25% of the values would be lower. All right, that's the idea. Let's look at how that's gonna work out. Here's our first set of examples. Here we're gonna say that a random variable x is normally distributed with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of, of one. So in other words, this is a standard normal deviation right here. And I want us to find the values of a such that the probability that x is less than a is 0.775 and the probability that x is greater than b is 0.441. Okay, so there's a new calculator command that we're gonna learn to work with here that helps you find the value of a number given the probability that something is less than that number actually. All right, and that new calculator command is what's gonna be called an inverse normal command. All right, I-N-V-N-O-R-M. You'll see how that works here in a moment. But let's put this problem into perspective a little bit by drawing a picture. These pictures are invaluable to you, and if you use them, you're gonna have great success. All right, so we're saying that the probability of a number x, or a random variable x being less than a number a is 0.775. So that would mean, of course, first of all, if more than half the data values are less than this number, it means it's greater than the mean. So maybe somewhere over here is where that data value would be. All right, so let's say that's A. And we're told that the area, essentially, to the left of A is about 0.775, or is 0.775. And we want to figure out what value A has to be if your mean is zero and the probability of a number being less than A is 0.775. All right, well, here's the new calculator command that we're gonna use. I spoke about it, now I'm gonna write it out for you. We're gonna use what's called the inverse normal distribution. Now, trying to calculate it is I-N-V-N-O-R-M. All right, and here's how the inverse normal works the command. It tells you the value of a number that is greater than a specified percentage of the values in a normal distribution given the mean and the standard deviation. All right. Now whenever you're using the inverse normal command what you have to do is you have to put the probability p that a number is less than a given value. Okay, I'll explain that further in a moment. These are the parameters you got to enter, a probability, and then you've got to input the mean and the standard deviation for the normal distribution that you're working with. In our case, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the inverse norm of 0.775, comma 0, comma 1. All right, type that into your calculator. Let's see what the value of A is. And it just happens to be a very similar number to the percentage that we entered in, but that's coincidental. It's about 0.775 is the value of A that we're going to get here. So, no, no, 0.775, excuse me, 0.755. That was why it was similar, because it all seemed like the number. All right, very simple. Now, there is one thing I, I cannot emphasize enough when you're using the inverse normal distribution, and that's what has to be true about the value of p that you enter in. p always needs to be the probability that your random variable x is less than whatever number a you're trying to find out. 
All right, it has to be the probability that it's less than. It has to represent the area to the left of that value A. Okay, now that'll be a very important distinction for part two that we're about to do, where we're given the probability that a random variable X is greater than some number B is about 0 0.441. All right, let me draw another curve to show you how that's going to work out. All right, now, if only 45% of the values are greater than this number B, that means B is in the upper half of the data set. It's going to be a little bit larger than the mean. All right, if it was 50% that were greater than B, B would be the mean. So we're looking at something right around here, maybe, as being the value of B. All right, and when it tells us that the probability that X is greater than that is 0 0.441, that would indicate to us that this area to the right side of that curve is 0 0.441. Now you hopefully understood what I was talking about in terms of the parameter for the probability that you enter in the inverse normal function. This number has to represent the probability that your random variable is less than the number you're trying to find. So we don't want to put 0 0.441 in there because that's the probability that the random variable x is greater than the number we're trying to find. What we need to do then is figure out if 44.1% of the values are greater than a, what percentage of the values are less than a? Because this over here is the number that we're going to have to put into our calculator. And of course, the way you can find that is simply subtracting the probability that x is greater than a from 1. Or we're actually working with b, not a, but you get the idea. So the area of this part of the curve here is going to be 1 minus 0.441, and that happens to be, well, not approximately, it is 0.559. Okay, so we will type in this to our calculator then. Inverse norm of 0.559, comma, 0, comma, 1 which is about 0.148, and then that's our value of B. B is approximately 0.148. All right, now finally, I'm gonna ask you to find the probability that in this normal distribution, the standard normal distribution, that X is between the values of B and A. And so now this goes back to using your normal CDF. Whenever you're trying to find a probability, using a normal distribution, you're gonna use normal CDF. When you're given the probability and you want to find the number that's greater than that value, then you use the inverse norm. Hopefully that makes sense. So here for part B, we're going to type in norm CDF. And then we'll type in our lower and upper boundaries. Your lower boundary is B, so 0.148. Your upper boundary is A, so 0.755. And then comma 0, comma 1 for the mean and the standard deviation. And so we'll find out that, that probability is approximately... 0.216. Alright, make some sense? Let's go ahead and use the inverse normal distribution for a couple other problems then. Now this is an interesting question. This is actually factual about the SAT. The scores on the SAT math and verbal tests are each such set such that the scores are normally distributed with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 110. Now one thing that can be done with a data set that's normally distributed is you can standardize it or normalize it and that's what the SAT does and they recenter the data every time so that it has a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 110. Now it's pretty complicated how they do that. Well, we're not ready to explain it yet anyway, but we're going to use those two values to answer a couple questions. Let's say that 10% of students score higher than some value M on the math test and we want to find the value of M. Okay, well we're going to use an inverse normal to do that. I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to draw the picture just like I did in the previous example. Again, this is invaluable for you. You need to be doing this if you're going to be sure that you're getting the right answers and that you understand the question in the first place. Now if only 10% of the students score higher that means we're looking at a value that is over here. It's on the upper half of the data set again. All right, and we're saying that the probability that somebody scores higher is 10%, which means that the probability that somebody would score less than the value of M, which we need to know for our calculator purposes, is gonna be 90%. All 
which by the way means that M is the 90th percentile for the data set. So if you've ever taken a standardized test, you've seen your percentile. All right, 90th percentile is what this value would correspond with. All right, and so we can say that that value M we can find by using the inverse norm of 0 0.9 when there's a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 110 which the three significant figures would be about 641 truly SAT scores you wouldn't score 641 we, we could say 640 but I'll go ahead and stay with our, our three significant figures thing that we use throughout the IB course here 641 is the value of M okay great now we're given that the probability that the random variable x is between some number n and m is 60% and we want to find the value of n. Well, we're going to draw another picture here to help us out. And there's going to be quite a bit of reasoning to what we're going to do right here. First of all, we've already figured out the value of m was 641, so I just went ahead and put that here. And we know that 10% of the data values were greater than that 641. That's what we're starting with. Now, we're told here that the value of n is such that the probability that a random variable x is between n and m is 60%. Okay, so m, or sorry, n would be somewhere over here. And the area under the curve between those values n and m that I'm shading in right now would be equal to 60%. Now, without a picture, I don't know if you would have gotten made this conclusion that I'm about to make right here, but it will seem very simple to make with a picture. What we've basically decided here is that 70% of the data values in this distribution are greater than this number n, which means that 30% of the data values fit this area right there. 30% of the data values are less than n. So there is a lot of reasoning made simple with the picture that helps us to come to the conclusion that n we can find by taking the inverse norm of 0.3 when the mean is 500 and the standard deviation is 110. Alright, about point, or not point, but 442 then would be the score corresponding with the 30th percentile, right? It would be 30% of data value, so that would be the 30th percentile. There you go, you've seen a lot of how to use the inverse normal. I want to do one more example here in the video and then we'll be done. All right, let's, and this looks complicated, but don't worry about it. The mass M of a widget produced at a factory is distributed normally so that the mean weight is 340 and the standard deviation is 28. Find the values of A and B such as the probability that the random variable X is between A and B is 85% and such that A and B are symmetrical about the mean. All right, let's draw a picture to try to make sense of all of this. So it's telling you about the weights of widgets produced at a factory. And it tells you the mean weight is 340, which I've labeled on the diagram. It tells you the standard deviation is 28. I won't label that on the diagram, but we'll need to know it here in a little bit. And we're trying to find two values A and B, such that the probability of X being between there is 85% and the A and B are symmetrical about the mean. Now the fact that they're symmetrical about the mean, I think that would make sense to you, could lead us to make this picture right here. Let's just put A and B equidistant from the mean, and then the fact that 85% probability, that there is an 85% probability of the random variable being between those two values means that this area is 0.85. Okay, now we can't use exactly the same logic we used for a similar question in the previous example because we don't know the value of B so that we could figure out, for instance, what percentage of values are less than A. But the fact that A and B are symmetrical about the mean actually allows us to do that same thing. What I'm going to do is go ahead and divide that region into two equal parts. So let's draw the mean all the way up there, and then we can see... that each half, I'm shading the left half in red, would contain 42.5%. That's half of 85. 
42.5% of the data values. Now, if you only think about the data values less than the mean, this whole thing has to be 50%, and most of that is between A and the mean. All right? That means that this area right here has to be the remaining 7.5% of that 50%. So then we can find the value A now, because we know what percentage of the data values are smaller than it is. All right, there's what we're typing into the calculator. It gives you 299.69, so 300 to three significant figures is the mass for which only 7.5% of these, um, well, only, yes, yeah, so only 7.5% of these widgets are less than that amount. Now, when we're trying to find the value of B, we again need to consider what is the percentage of values that are less than B. Now, it's getting ridiculous to try to show shading here, so I'm going to try to draw this below the picture. If we look at the area under the curve from the far left all the way up to B, well, we've got this 50% right here plus this portion, which now since that's purple, I'll say that's 42.5%. That means 92.5% of the data values are less than B. So then we'll say B is the inverse norm of 0.925, 340, 28. And that's about 380, which actually that makes sense. If these two data values were symmetric about the mean, if A was 40 less, then B had to be 40 greater than, didn't it? All right, there you go. That's how you use inverse normal distributions to find a value for which some percentage, a specific percentage of the data values are less than. Thanks for watching the video. This should help you tremendously. Later.